I can't think of a moment bigger than this one. I've likened this as the moment for biology akin to the moment when fissile nuclear material was figured out by physics and offered both a way to solve the problems of the universe and nuclear weapons. These papers really represent uh, a seminal moment in life sciences. Uh, we now really have been confronted with examples of where the science itself, it, which is very important in moving forward for the public's health, also pose a potential risk for nefarious actions or in even uh, those situations where this virus might escape from a laboratory. So we're really at a point for the first time of trying to balance uh, the need to know versus the need to protect. There is a need for dual use research. That's the, that's the point for establishing of this committee, the NSABB. And the idea there is that we find some way to balance public health interests, freedom of speech, and freedom to pursue research of scientists with the public good and public concerns about the safety and security of research. We believe that it would be uh, uh, not in the world's best interest to have all the detailed information come out. Now having said that, we also have uh, made a very strong call for an international discussion about where do we go forward. So the NSABB never saw itself as being the final arbiter on this. Really we're, I think you might say, the first court of appeals and we know we need uh, uh, more guidance from all the life sciences around the world to, to move to the next step. I think we can learn a great deal about transmission of influenza virus through the air from this work. This is a question we know very little about. There are very, very few systems in which to study it. And these are the first advances that we have uh, on studying the transmission in ferrets. So there's so many additional experiments that come from this. It would be a shame to suppress uh, the data from these, these experiments. One of the really disappointing uh, parts of this discussion to date has been that everyone seems to have their own set of facts. And in particular, for myself, coming from a public health background where I've been in the trenches, fighting disease, doing surveillance, stopping outbreaks, uh, I've watched a number of the life scientists who have made blanket statements about the public health utility of this kind of information or what we can do with it uh, as an argument for why it should be widely disseminated. And in the first instance, none of this holds water. And it doesn't mean that the work isn't important. It doesn't mean life sciences shouldn't move forward. But uh, there's been a lot of misunderstandings about what the real utility of this information is in protecting the public's health. I think we need to have an Asilomar type moment where scientists meet and decide how to go forward. Unfortunately, since 9-11, we now have a lot of policy analysts who are participating in this debate, not scientists. And I think it's unfortunate in a way because this, the result of Asilomar, where there were largely scientists meeting, were the regulations that uh, applied to recombinant DNA. So in an ideal world, that's what I would like to happen. But as you know, it's not an ideal world. The mistake made at the Asilomar moment was that it was scientists talking to scientists. Very heated. It was not a, you know, happy little let's all hold hands and agree and then saying to the public, okay, we've reached an agreement, you all should trust us. And the backlash from community to community all over the world was enormous. After you've pursued work, you've invested lots of resources in trying to get it done, and you've submitted for publication and be told that it can't be published. It would be far better to have discussions of this sort at the time that the work is first described. Everybody can be a Monday morning quarterback and say, we should have thought of this, we could have thought of this, and we actually did. We just didn't think that influenza was the one we had to worry about. But now we're where we're at. Those days are over with. We now realize we have to be very concerned about how we move forward. Now, in my view, I can't think of an experiment done by a legitimate uh, scientist seeking answers to a question that, that you wouldn't want to publish. I can think of very, many experiments that a nefarious scientist would do and you wouldn't want to publish, and they wouldn't either. 
but legitimate experiments, in my view, are all publishable. The issues about publication and about conducting this research really need to be addressed by the scientific community at large with representatives from public health, with international representation. I think it's very important that this debate occurs now and I think these papers have given us the opportunity to have this debate now.